So what is the actual utility of philosophy in relation to writing in life? Well, philosophy is just a way of how to make sense of the world and to discover if uh, there's a meaning behind your life and, and you know why we're here, that type of thing. Which is really, uh, when you think about it, very similar to religion. Um, very early, the early beginnings of religion was, in a way, how to explain the world and how it operated and, you know, um, to give meaning to your life, right? To give you a blueprint on how to live a proper life in which at the end of it, you'll be rewarded, right? So philosophy is kind of an extension of that. And when you think about it, like the, the earlier philosophers, uh, Socrates, uh, Heraclitus, uh, you know, they, they mentioned the gods of their time in relation to uh, the meaning of their life. Now, why is this important in writing? Well, for me, I found that philosophy teaches you how to think critically, right? It teaches you to question everything, which I think is very important, especially in writing, because it teaches you to think clearly. Now, what is writing itself? It's just a clear distillation of your thoughts. Like a lot of times your thoughts are chaotic. They're all over the place. Writing action just sets, puts them in a lane way and uh, allows other people to, to share your thoughts and hopefully understand them, provided that you wrote it out properly, right? And hopefully you didn't write it out in a way that you're misunderstood. So... <clears throat> Philosophy kind of helps you understand logic and logical fallacies and critical thinking. And this is important, really, because if you don't understand the logic of a situation, how are you going to be creative around making a reader suspend their disbelief to buy into what you're trying to sell them, right? And that's really what you're trying to sell them. You're trying to sell them the illogical through a logical framework, which can be very tricky at times, provided that you're not being as clear in your writing as you should be. A lot of philosophers created systems just for this purpose, right? Like Aristotle had rules of logic that he laid out. Uh, Schopenhauer had his rules of logic that he laid out. It's only a, a way to understand, help you understand what, they're, what they were writing within a framework of their reference, right? Um, and like I said, there's a, there's a lot of utility philosophy, right? So it's like it, a lot of them purport to have um, this is how you live a good life, right? So there's like Nicomedian ethics written by Aristotle. There's uh, what he considered uh, the good life and how to achieve it. And Plato had his own ideas on that. And Socrates had his own idea on that. And, you know, a lot of them have a lot of frameworks. Like Buddhism, Catholicism, uh, Islam. They all have this blueprint on how to live a good life and what you should do in order to to achieve that that good life and depending on the framework there'll be different reward structures set in place for that right so consider stoicism right um it's been getting a bit of a resurgence of popularity uh, especially due to ryan holiday I wrote a few books on them on uh, the stoics of the past but a lot of the principles in stoicism is actually used in psychological treatment today and it's been labeled as cognitive behavior therapy so it can help a lot of people coming back from uh, like veterans coming back with uh, how to deal with their pain it also helps people with a lot of anxiety so there's there's a lot of utility in philosophy past the, just the writing part um, and but, you know, obviously, my favorite philosopher so far anyways, because there's a lot of them out there, but the one I, I'm really enamored with, I would say, would be Nietzsche, Friedrich Nietzsche. He's, uh, <laughs> he questioned everyone, he criticized everyone, and from a very logical framework, like he said, um, most philosophers, philosophy is just a confession of their own values and morals, and is not based upon the logic that they're saying it is <laughs> which is a pretty scathing uh, remark but you know not inaccurate either he's pretty bang on with that actually because a lot of times people write um, 
within the context of their times, right? So like Plato and like I said, Socrates, they're talking about the gods of their time, which is, you know, gods that wouldn't be acceptable uh, later on when Christianity was on the rise and Judaism was on the rise and all that type of stuff. It, would, it wouldn't have been acceptable because they were monotheistic, right? And uh, the gods of Socrates' time were, there's polytheistic background to it. Anyhow, if you're interested in Nietzsche, a great podcast that I would encourage you to listen to is the Nietzsche podcast, because Nietzsche is very dense, and um, sometimes I'll, I'll read a paragraph of his and be like stumped for a day or two, but this Nietzsche podcast, um, the podcast host named Keegan, he, uh, he does a really, really good breakdown of Assad's, the history of Assad's, the background, Nietzsche's influences, and why he might have wrote the way he did and his changing thought patterns. It's uh, really, really good. I encourage you to listen. So once again, philosophy in writing is good for the purposes that it teaches you critical thinking, teaches you logic, and with this you'll be able to create good characters, great plot structure, and a fast pace. So give it a read.